that I very severely hurt my knee. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you who are new here, I'm Dana and this is Chris and we're both professional dancers. As dancers, we've done a number of different jobs. If you want to learn a little bit about us and our career, you can go ahead and click the link there. But be sure to come back to this video. Today we're going to be talking about cruise ships. Now we spent most of our career performing on ships. We actually met on ships. Um, not that we're going to delve into our relationship on this video. That is something we tend to talk about again and again. again. <laughs> You're probably sick of us just talking about how we met. <laughs> I think most dancers ask themselves at some point, should I work on a cruise ship? You know, there's a lot of jobs available because there's so many different ships. And the answer ultimately is yes. Definitely. Yes, you should. <laughs> and we're going to tell you why. First of all, the stigma is dead. Now, when I was back in college, cruise ships were honestly looked at as kind of like a lower thing to do. You know, it's not Broadway, it's not the West End, but things have changed. Like now you've got Broadway shows on the ships on the Royal Caribbean, I've got Broadway shows. Um, I think Norwegian Cruise Line do as well. We even worked with the legendary Stephen Schwartz on one of the shows we did on board. You may know Stephen Schwartz from shows like Wicked, Pippin, and Godspell. So yeah, you can basically just end the stigma of shows not being very good because they're amazing on board. And for the people out there that are saying, well, you know, cruise ships, it's not Broadway, it's not the West End. Well, at the end of the day, Jazz music isn't heavy metal, but it's still music. Cruise ships are its own thing. You can't really compare it. If you want to do it, you do it. A big thing that some people do find a little tricky to get used to is the living conditions. Now you probably already know, dancers do have to share a cabin on the ship. At least for most ships, I think. Maybe a bit different on some of the smaller ones, depending on the company, but majority of dancers have to share a cabin. Which for us was perfect. Obviously we're a couple, if you are a couple, you can stay in the same cabin. Yeah, you're on bunk beds, but you know, you can get used to it. Um, and that's nice, you can personalize the cabin and make it your home, which is great to do. That being said, of course, you can make friends. Usually in rehearsals, you kind of pick who you want to live with. Uh, if you make friends with someone, you can live with them. And that's quite nice, and you really do get to know each other. Well, definitely. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know someone before you live with them, you surely know them after. <laughs> Even if the living conditions are a bit tight with obviously you and a roommate, you still have the whole ship that you can move around and stuff. So you still have crew bar that you can go to, the gym, uh, the mess, all these different places that you can see other friends, you can go hang out in other people's cabins, things like that. So yes, maybe sleeping is not as, you, you know, you don't have a big king size bed or anything like that but it's not too bad because you're not going to spend the majority of your time necessarily in your cabin. Another thing to keep in mind in terms of living conditions, obviously since you don't have that much room, is you can't really bring a lot of stuff on board. So you really have to pack well. <laughs> and depending on where you're going, you might be going to warm places and cold places. So you're going to have to learn how to compact your whole life and wardrobe into one or two suitcases. It can be challenging, but worth it. Right, here we go. TV cribs. <laughs> <laughs> so you start here, and there's the door. <laughs> you can put your uniform here. You've it's got the there. trash can here. You've got the hat rack and accessories rack, which is actually a safety ladder for the top bunk, but obviously we don't have it up. Draw space, shoe space. This is a brand new carpet that we just got today, and it's look at the quality. Nice. This rug we bought, pretty good. Um, there's photos here. Photo gallery. Photos. <laughs> nice photos here. Compact. But nice. Uh, 
stuff, sink, really? shower, spare towels, stuff to put your shampoo on. Yeah. So you got TV, you got speaker, you got a phone, coffee maker, pretty good. That doesn't come with the room. It doesn't, well, the coffee maker doesn't come with the room, <laughs> but the rest does. This actually heats up uh, your wine. That's not what it's for, it's for the fridge, but it does that. This is the fridge. Got your water in there, and there's some like stuff to make sandwiches. It's the bed, it's nice. This is actually the top bunk, but we push it up and we've got some more photos and posters on there. This is some artwork that we made over here. Life jackets up there for safety. There you go, so there is it from the distance. It's quite spacious, okay. And that's it. So, thanks for coming. Ta People have asked me before if you get homesick while sunboard because you're out there for several months at a time. But the thing is, you might get a little bit homesick. If you're like me, I'm, I'm kind of a homebody. So I love being home with my friends and family. But the thing about going on a ship, you create your own family on board. You literally get to know people and become friends for life because you spend so much time together, you work together, you live together, all these things. So you really get to know these people so much quicker than in a normal day-to-day -day environment. So you really do become friends for life and those people become your family. So then you're not as homesick because you're with your onboard family. You've got crew parties on board, which are just fantastic. You're getting up in all these different ports with the friends that you've made, exploring the world together with these people. It's just fantastic, and, but it is true, yeah, sometimes you can feel a little isolated, but um, the moment passes when someone's knocking at your door saying, come on, let's go, let's go get a drink, the bar's open, you know, or whatever it is, it's cool. <laughs> Something that's really cool is basically celebrity status. Now hold on, let me just explain what I mean by that. If you're in a show on land, once you leave the show, you're not gonna necessarily get stopped on the streets, you know, an hour or two after the show, a day or two after the show. But on the cruise ship, because passengers are on there for a week, two weeks, maybe even months, you become like a mini celebrity. Once a passenger has seen the show, they do tend to remember you. Yeah, so on most ships, you're allowed to go up to dinner um, in the passenger areas and you feel like a celebrity. The cast is all coming together. People are like stopping you like, oh my God, weren't you in the show? You were so amazing. So you really do feel like a celebrity. It's really cool. Even if you get off on land, sometimes people stop you in the street, which then becomes like, not annoying, but that's kind of like your, you know, your free time and then you feel like a real celebrity being like, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm shopping, you know? <laughs> Call my sister. <laughs> yeah. No, if you want your ego stroked and you're that kind of person, you get yourself on a ship. <laughs> Another amazing thing about working on board is you get to save so much money. So you don't have to pay for rent while you're there, transportation, any sort of thing like that. So you're just pocketing all the money that you're earning. Also, crew bar is super cheap, so drinks are super cheap. But yeah, you just save every single dollar that you are earning on board. And it can be really amazing to get a bit of extra change in that bank account. Ultimately, every dancer should do a ship contract. They're so worth it. You learn so much about yourself, so much about the people around you. And for me, after my first contract, I didn't really want to do another one. I didn't think they were for me. But if I hadn't have done another one, I would have never met Chris, and I wouldn't have done some of my favorite shows that I've ever performed in my life. So absolutely, 100% do a ship contract. At the end of the day, some contracts are only, what, six months, maybe even four months. So. Yeah, it's worth a go. It is a bit like you either love it or you hate it, but it's still worth doing. What have you got to lose?
We hope you enjoyed this little video about our cruise ship experience. We've got an idea to go a little bit more in depth about the pros and the cons of working on cruise ships. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, please go ahead, comment below, let us know. Also, go ahead and drop a comment if you've worked on a cruise ship because we'd love to hear your experience as well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.